Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk to engineers how to half your mixing time with intelligent acoustic design. I talk to a lot of engineers every day. I think last week we had 65 calls total for the week and that's Monday through Wednesday. And I would guess half of those are engineers. The rump goal always with engineers is a frequency response friendly environment because 99% of the room sizes that we see do not support low frequency energy properly. They just can't. 40 cycle, 30 cycle energy, 30, 40, 35 feet long, 40 cycle energy, 30 feet long. If You don't have those kind of dimensions and who does? You're gonna have pressure. You're gonna have pressure problems in the room and they're gonna oscillate through the room and you can't position your way out of them. You can't put your speakers here or your monitoring position there and minimize those because these things oscillate through our room. Look at the graphic here for pressure. See how it oscillates through the room? In this particular graphic, the seat is in a, a null, so he's not hearing certain things. If he's positioned in the peak, he's hearing too much, so they attenuate and they exaggerate, both things that we do not want, right? We must manage this low frequency pressure first and foremost. You have to focus on the mids. People all the time focus on, or focus on the lows. People all the time focus on the mids and the highs, but it's the low frequency pr pressure issues that also contribute to the middle and high frequency harmonic issues. So we got to go to the source of the problem first. Obviously, the source of the problem is the room. We should get rid of the room. We can't do that. But we have to live in the room. So we have to treat the issues that the room produces. And we have to start with low frequency pressure first. Low frequency fundamentals produce middle and high frequency harmonics. They're all related. It's all one big extended family starting with the nuclear family, which is the mother and the father, if you will, which are the low frequencies, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, 60s. Those are the problematic areas that we have to deal with. And 99% of rooms that we see can't handle that energy. So what are we going to do? Okay. We got to get that energy out of the way. We got to keep resolution as our ultimate goal and definition. If we have less distortions to work around, we're going to have better workflow. We're going to move through things faster. Our mixes are going to come into focus a lot faster. We're, we're not going to have to say, ah, the low end's horrible. Let's figure out how to fix that. That all takes time, right? And you need to use your time for creation. I mean, that's why you got into the business, was to create. And the tools that you all have to create with, my God, it's amazing. The tone control you have, and reverb and delay, and all that electronic processing, I don't know how you all keep up with it. But creation is the goal, right? We need to use our creative forces to produce product, not spend the time working around room issues. We got to get that frequency response friendly environment going. And how are we going to do that? Our goal is translation. I talk to a lot of engineers. Well, I have to take my mixes here. I have to take my mixes here. I have to take my mixes to the car. You shouldn't have to do that. You should be able to believe in your room. You should be able to believe in the translation that you're hearing in your room, that it'll be working in all situations. I can't believe the time people spend doing that. So they're chasing resolution when they should be fixing the resolution of their room. That should be the goal, right? The direct energy from the monitors, that's the no room sound, remember? We're trying to get that's why we sit near field as engineers. We just want this. We don't want this. We want that direct energy from our speakers. That's why we sit near field, to minimize the impact of the room. 
well, let's fix the room so we can sit anywhere we want. Because the room has a big impact. Low frequency pressure, the room size and volumes determines the location of that low frequency pressure issues. Every wall is different. You could have a 30 cycle problem on one wall, 40 cycle on another, 50 on another, 60, 70 cycle problem, floor to ceiling, okay? Reflection management is critical also because the closer you're sitting to a room boundary surface, the more attention has to be paid to that reflection interfering with our direct sound. So the size and distance that we work with, it's also a big factor in placing diffusion. Diffusion is a technology to make a small room sound larger, but you have to have the distance for that energy coming out of the diffuser to fully form. So that takes distance. So size is really important. Low frequency absorption technology is going to take 12 to 16 inches of space against the walls. So basically, we're building a new room inside of your room without using hammer and nails. Now we have to figure out, is that new room dimension producing more problems than we're fixing? So we have the outside dimension of the room, which we call OD, and then we have the ID, the internal dimension, which is after treatment. We gotta make sure that the OD and the ID work well together. So by making the room smaller with treatment, we're not creating more problems, especially in the lower frequency pressure area. Very important. When we're building new rooms, I always tell my clients, we're looking for two out of the three dimensions favorable. We're looking for two out of the three dimensions that work good mathematically. The third one would be great if we can get it to, to get along with the other two. But as a minimum, we got to have two of those three working together. Most of the time, all three are fighting each other. So we want to get two of the three at least working together. 12 to 16 inches of space for low frequency management. Unfortunately, it kind of flies against logic, but we got to make the room smaller in order to make it sound better. It's weird, but that's how it is because we have to give up so much space for treatment. Floor to ceiling, front wall, rear wall, side wall, side wall, floor to ceiling. These are all sound fields within the room. All three of them have to be paid attention to for both pressure and reflections. And a lot of times that floor to ceiling dimension is completely forgotten about. And you can't do that because that produces problems in the 50 to 70 hertz range, most ceiling heights, 8, 9, 10 foot is standard. That's why I always say 13, 14, 15 for ceiling heights. So we can get out of this 50 to 70 cycle trap that most ceilings have, no lower ceilings that we work with in North America anyway. So everything is important, but the goal is to re create a more friendly frequency response environment to work in. We can start from the beginning hammer nails and building, or we can use panels that we bring into the room to treat the problems in the room. We have to qualify the problems and then quantify the amount of treatment that we need. And we have to make the room smaller in order to make it sound better. But the goal is workflow. We want to get our product out faster, do more, so we can create more value. And that's the goal and less frustration. I mean, you want to be able to sit in your mixing chair and know that what you're doing and what you're hearing in the mix is actually there and not the room distortions that you have to work in. Best room to work in is no room. If you could take your rig outside and the only surface area that you have would be the earth that you're sitting upon, that would be the best situation. But unfortunately, we don't have those kind of uh, environments anymore to work in. Too many people in the world, it's too crowded and it's way too noisy. So engineers, how to have your mixing times with intelligent acoustic design. Start with the low frequency pressure problems first. Work your way up, middle frequency issues, 
and then the high frequency issues and select a room size that will allow you to give up that 12 to 16 inches of space along the walls to treat and, and not produce a new room size that causes more problems. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.